Looking Ahead, the Future of Hospitality Operations. Sponsored by Actable. Hosted by Remington Hotels. In terms of hotel operations, where are we right now, and where will we be in the beginning of 2023, in the next six months to a year? We're in a, an interesting time as far as operating a hotel right now, and for that matter, um, pretty much I guess you could lump us in with any other asset class. We're dealing with employees that haven't worked in our, in our industry before. Um, you're probably hearing about labor shortage and supply chains. So we'll leave those just kind of consistent with every other industry that's out there. But I think what's interesting with us is the way people are making their booking decisions is totally different than anything we're used to. They're waiting till the last minute. They're bringing their families. They're bringing their pets. They're combining school and business and leisure. And they're mandating that the experience be everything that they thought it would be before they got there. And with the labor and supply chain issues that we're all facing, we have to limit at some points, we have to limit some of what we're able to offer. And I think our customer <clears throat> is okay with that, which is kind of surprising, but they're okay. As long as you're honest and open and they know what to expect and it's communicated prior to their arrival. Other than that, I think it's a great time to be in the industry as we learn this new generation of associates that are coming in, this Gen Z, and what their expectations are for their careers. And I think we can, um, if we keep this at glass half full, I think our operating a hotel is, um, it's actually fun again. Where we are today is, you know, frankly, revenues have recovered. Occupancy isn't fully back, but, you know, the top line is, and we still have staffing challenges across the country. I, I think most of our hotels are about 10% understaffed, but we've learned to operate hotels with 10 to 20% less staff. So we've reinvented how we've operated the hotels in food and beverage, front desk, housekeeping. And I think that's a trend that'll hold that, you know, when revenues or occupancy, let me say, next year is back to 2019 levels, I don't think we'll be back to 2019 staffing levels. We'll always operate hotels with slightly less staff and hopefully delivering a better guest experience through technology, through process change. You know, what I think will look different next year is that food and beverage will be back in a very meaningful way. A lot of hotels are not fully recovered in their F&B revenues. They are on the room side, but not on the F&B, and I expect by next year that will be the case. And that means that we'll be having big banquets, big city-wide. Our restaurants will be busier than they ever have. And so I think these staffing issues that we have are going to be protracted. And so we have to think differently. We have to figure out how do we operate a hotel at the same occupancy level as 2019 with 10 to 20 percent less staff. And that's what us as an operator are trying to do. And I think that's what the industry answer is because we we always get the question of, well, what is the solution for the staffing shortages we have? Immigration is a big part of the answer, but the fact that that's not, again, not going to get done in the next few years, you have to figure out a way to do more with less. I'm very excited for 2023, despite the economic headwinds that we must all face together. What I notice is that we've had a wonderful resilience, not just in the consumer who's prioritizing travel over other spending, but we're noticing a real pickup in small group. I'm expecting there to be a loosening of international travel, which is gonna really have an impact in some of our major urban markets and places that have really pulled it all off with just domestic activity. And so if you add more group and more international, which I'm expecting next year, um, I, I really like some of the positivity that I'm expecting around the top line. Another factor, of course, is that Q1 of 21 was heavily impacted by Omicron, and so we're coming off of a weak comp, you could argue, and so a lot of our budgets for the first quarter are heavily biased towards seeing a more stable return to travel versus what we had a year ago. And then finally, even on labor shortage, which we think about a lot, it's starting starting to loosen up and our time to fill for salaried positions is, is stabilizing. 
and the number of applications for hourly positions is improving. It's a long way from where it needs to be, but I'm a positivist and I'm starting to notice that these trends will help our revenue and result in cost uh, enhancement for next year. Right now, I think everybody's getting their feet on the ground. We've got business coming back, which is a great thing. Um, and we're trying to maneuver, getting staff hired, getting them trained. You know, being down for almost a year, it was very difficult. Uh, we found some common ground. I love what it did. It put everybody back into operations, um, taught them everything about a hotel, which is amazing. Uh, a lot of people say, well, it's just so difficult, but it really taught us what we need to do with hotels. Um, with the younger generation coming up, they're learning all aspects of hospitality, which is just amazing, and that's just so much for us in the future. So I think in 2023, I know there's a lot of fear of a recession. We haven't seen it slow down at this point. It may slow down, but again, I think we can get back to basics, get everybody working again, and I just think it's gonna be an amazing 2023, and I think we're gonna move forward in a very positive way. Today, we're, we're at a place where um, things have recovered from COVID. Um, we are, um, from an ADR perspective, we're, we're, we're performing above where we expected to perform. Occupancy, we're, we're lagging a little bit, but overall RevPAR is you know, back um, to pre-COVID levels or so. And you know, the, the world is operating as if COVID is behind us. So you know, business travel is, is picking up. Um, you know, weekend group business is picking up. Um, well, leisure has been there, but now it's the business the Monday through uh, Thursday travel, or Sunday through Thursday travel is where we've been, been lacking um, over the past few months or so. So we're pretty bullish about the direction um, and the trajectory that the industry um, you know, is headed towards. But with some of the macroeconomic you know, um, elements or things that are happening today, um, you know, we all believe that we're, we're headed towards a recession. Um, with the interest rate hikes, um, inflation, um, construction costs from an ownership perspective that we need that we need to be cognizant of is the capital markets today and a lot of reserves were um, depleted during COVID so when you have these property improvement plans these pips that are going to be coming up over the next year or two um, trying to figure out a way on how to capitalize those and if you need to go back to the market and, and refinance it's not as friendly of a market as it was, you know, several years ago. So that's that's a concern from a from an operation standpoint as well that we just all need to be cognizant of. Or so. So right now, I think what we've seen is rates have come back. Um, we're still lagging on the occupancy side, primarily because BT isn't back as much um, in our geographic markets. A lot of this is geographic specific but kind of in the urban areas on the East Coast, you're seeing, you know, ability to push rate, you're not seeing occupancies, you're seeing um, international travel is pretty much non-existent because we need the airlines to kind of come back and we need the dollar, you know, the dollar strength doesn't help. And then on the cost side, utility costs have gotten really um, out of control. Obviously in this inflationary environment, labor costs have gotten um, very difficult. So net net, you know, it's great that we're able to push rates, but we have seen some cost creep. Um, and then next year, I think, you know, the hope is that we don't go into a recession. We have the ability to see some occupancy push. Rates are gonna continue to, to go strong. Um, so I think we'll wind up in a pretty good 2023 as long as we can continue to retain our talent, focus on culture within our hotels, um, I think we'll be back, pretty much back to 2019 levels in 2023. You know, I think through the end of the year and the next six months, my thought is let's run through the tape as we near the end of the year, demand is continuing to stay strong. The segments that have taken a little bit to come back, like international and group and business, continue to look bullish. Unemployment is holding. Uh, we've got, looks like we're gonna have divided government, so that means not too much regulation, so that's great here on election day. Uh, so I think run through the tape and take advantage of some of the pricing power. If I think about you know, Q1 and Q2 of next year, my thought for everybody would be to continue to innovate. 
probably time to renovate and you're gonna be able to drive right. So I hope everybody has a great Q1 and Q2.